Şimdi ana konuşmacılarımızdan Şerif Kan'ı ağırlayacağız. Microsoft'un Asya Bölgesi İnsan Kaynakları Genel Müdürü Şerif Kan bize pandeminin dijital dönüşüme ve şirketlerdeki çalışma kültürüne etkileri hakkında görüşlerini aktaracak. Hi today. Great to be here with all of you. Um, and I think we've got the technology working and I'm looking forward to just spending a few minutes with you to give you a bit of a window in terms of what's been going on in the Far East uh, for the last little while. It's been an incredible period of time, several months actually right now. Um, my role is uh, head of HR for Asia for Microsoft um, and uh, that region, the Asia region for, for my scope uh, spans everything from Northern Asia, that's greater China, uh, Japan, etc., all the way down to New Zealand and Australia and in the East um, uh, from again all the way over to India so that's a bit of the span of the region and it's been an incredible several months so far uh, I had left uh, China Beijing where I lived for five years in January when the pandemic took off I tried to get back in in March uh, got stuck outside um, got stuck in Singapore locked out of China locked into Singapore and still here six months later uh, in Singapore where I've now kind of remotely relocated myself to Uh, and my family uh, for this period of time. But it's been incredible to be in what's going on since then. Early on, we were talking a lot about issues that around people's locations, people being stuck outside their work location, how do they deal with working remotely, what it means to be doing calls all day, on camera, on voice, um, no real parameters around time of day, what's work time, what's personal time, etc. This whole digital transformation of the world of work has been incredible uh, during that period. Uh, but, you know, asking me today the same question of how things are is a little bit different. Uh, we're in stage six in China, which means we're back to work. Work life is normal in China. No mask. Everyone's back. Uh, work is normal. Meetings are normal. Everything is back. It's not as exactly before it was, uh, the pandemic, but Life has definitely returned to some degree of normality, I would say. And the whole process of getting there has, was a little bit interesting because if you reflect back, what happened over the last several months was fairly traumatic for people. I mean, in China, that where things were really happening first, people went to a very serious and disciplined sort of lockdown at that point. So people on my team, people I know, they were in their apartments, not literally leaving their apartment for several months uh to really get control of this and in asia you know when they tend to get control over things there's a lot of discipline around the actions and that take to really get control over the pandemic so it was an interesting process so getting people back to work was also an interesting process because every individual is different and some who were in a specific work scenario or work environment during that period they had to get used to really getting back to a work environment where they were back with people all the time. And that wasn't easy for everyone. And they have to actually be coaxed back into the office, social get togethers, uh, meetings that were not necessarily all work related, but getting people sort of briefings and updates and inviting them in, making them feel comfortable with the physical environment, the safety, the security, everything at the office was a really fascinating uh, process because it wasn't immediate. It wasn't like, okay, Everyone, you can come back to the office, it's safe, and everyone rushed back in. No, that wasn't the case. People were really recovering from the trauma of these several months. People had sort of, there were personal implications of that, there were work implications of that, and people really had to sort of be uh, comforted, invited, coaxed to really come back in and say, hey, it's okay, we're all here together, let's meet together, let's get back to work and have some meetings and slowly transition back. Now, it doesn't mean uh, that work environment has gone back to a full back to work environment. We're more into a hybrid model, I would say. Hybrid model being that, uh, you know, what we call is, is when people are, um, you know, if they're less than 50%, if they're 50% working at home, then that's still kind of a normal work environment for, for us. It's still, you know, work as usual. Uh, you come into the office part of the time, you work from home part of the time. But if you decide then that you want to work at home the majority of the time, then that's a different process. When we are what we call stage six, which is back to work, that means 
that you really need to align with your manager if it's going to be the majority of your time still at home. Uh, so there is every expectation that it's not a, for us, a full sort of default to everyone just is working remotely for good. No, we believe in the value of uh, being in the office, being with your teams, um, having that energy, that collaboration, that creativity that comes when you're together, uh, but also knowing that, you know, working remotely is a reality as well. So that was a really interesting learning. And when you, you know, when I had a call with my team in China earlier today, I could see people walking around the office in the background. It was incredible and a great feeling to see where they are. And we have a couple of other countries that have hit what we call stage six again, uh, which is in that normal environment. And then of course we have countries at the other end of the spectrum, uh, like India, for example, which has a very high number of cases. People are really being cautious, working from home, and we obviously support that and respect that, and we have a, a good process for that. But what's happening really is, uh, as different countries are at different ends of the spectrum, we operate often across border, we oper operate internationally, uh, you get this hybrid work, right? So different people in different stages, all working together and trying to really progress on getting things done. It was a great learning about culture. Uh, we had done a lot of work on culture before around leadership principles, manager behaviors, values. And it is incredible when I think about that work that was done about two or three years ago, how it served as a real foundation and bedrock for us through a period of a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unease, a lot of concern from people. It served us well to be able to rely on those principles and those values values of honesty, integrity, respect, uh, really when people were managers, for example, when managers uh, you know, care for their families at home, uh, but care for their teams at work, uh, it was a really huge burden and pressure on them to be able to continue and manage carefully. But it was really good for them to be able to rely on you know, the principles that we had, the manager behaviors that we have around model, coach, care, you know, being a role model, uh, coaching and caring for people who are really going through some significant, what could be considered a significant crisis. And so that obviously took its toll as well on them. But, you know, having that bedrock of culture was really important for them. When we talk to our customers and partners, I spend a lot of time with them myself. You know, they always ask us about our culture. What is it about your culture? How is it important? How did you transition your business? How did you get into this digital transformation that you're in today and be able to get to a point of where your strategy is clear, um, your culture is uh, quite robust, uh, and your people on this ride with you? That has been a really important question that we've been receiving from all of our customers. Um, and, um, you know, I, and there's a lot that we have to say, really. There's a lot that we have to bring. Uh, but it's never done. It's always work in progress and we're always learning how to get better. Um, you know, these things like hybrid work has been interesting. Uh, you know, I mean, it started, the culture shift started with this book. You know, we have, there's this book from Carol Dweck called The Growth Mindset. And the growth mindset was where this concept of potential in people uh, being the foundation for how we're looking at uh, the way we work and the way we develop. Uh, that was that's always been there and it continues to be there and so um but through this period there's been many things that have happened i mean the mental health crisis has been significant we've done a lot of work in australia and creating a corporate alliance around mental health a topic that has often been difficult in the, in our region uh has been brought to front and we created alliances cross-border sharing of knowledge and now we're moving forward to really create more support for our people uh, around mental health issues that, that were created around this pandemic and, and even beyond that. So that's been an important uh, journey for us. Now, there's other things as well. I mean, I could go on, uh, you know, I think that, you know, you saw companies do really interesting things during the pandemic. You know, they're really prior reprioritizing what they value. Uh, there was an article I saw coming out of Dubai of a company that said, you know, we're going to get rid of all our job titles. So kudos to them, you know, for really thinking differently, thinking, Wow, you know, job title is important in many places, but when you think about it, is it really important? Is it is it really what it takes to be a leader? Do you have to have is job title being such an important part of that, or can we really start thinking beyond that? Uh, contribution is really about impact, about 
contributing to businesses, to customers, to partners, uh, not really about having a job title. <laughs> and they got rid of their job titles in their whole organization. I thought it was pretty fascinating to observe that. Um, and so that was just an example, many other things uh, as well going on. Uh, but you know, you all, we also saw the environment changing, the business environment changing. So a lot of companies, while they were reforming um, their business strategy, a lot of them unfortunately impacted quite deeply by this pandemic, uh, been really difficult for them. And some of them accelerating during the pandemic and often companies uh, that, you know, whose foundation was cloud, who are technology driven, uh, they're into sort of communication and media and all that kind of stuff. They've been really lurching forward during this pandemic. Um, and it's been fascinating to see that. I mean, companies expanding, growing, um, also companies going IPO uh, with really significant uh, uh, launches, um, and also companies that have been spinning off part of their businesses to focus on certain core competencies that uh, they would, uh, they think, can accelerate forward now in this new world, in this real technologically transformed environment where it's become crystal clear to some companies around the bets that they've been considering have been the bets that they need to make and need to really move forward with in order to sustain their growth and survival, even in some cases into the future. It's been really fascinating to see that as an HR person, I get involved a lot in talent, a lot in recruiting talent, developing talent, retaining talent, and it's been tougher than ever, really, to find the best talent. You would think that they're all kind of swimming around and waiting. No, everybody's after great talent with digital transformation capability, deep industry knowledge, great technical knowledge, great ability to understand the commercial cloud, the consumer cloud, uh, understanding data, understanding um, every element of technology, AI as well, all those elements of technology, well, you know what? There's never enough talent. There's still not enough. And the competition has gotten more and more fierce for that. So it's that's been fascinating and really entirely unexpected for many uh, that that would happen. But that reskilling process, that transforming capabilities has been really, really key. Uh, just doubling down on giving people the skills they need as well within our company so that they can step up and continue to be successful. Uh, that the people we have today that we're investing in a lot. And so these are some of the things uh, that have been on our mind and that have been important uh, uh, to us during this period. Um, and, you know, always continuing to learn. And even though we've had this experience over the last several months, nobody really knows where the future is heading. But what we do know is when we invest in our people, when we're listening to them, understanding what's on their mind, when we're listening to our customers and partners, uh, and understanding what's important to them and how they're experiencing all the changes that are going on today. It serves us well to be able to understand if we can help them, then we're in a good place. And so I'll pause there and stop and just say thank you uh, for the opportunity to really address all of you today. And I wish you all the success in your path ahead and as you continue to explore this digital transformation journey. So thank you so much and all the best.